is that most people don't know that we actually do. Uh, already, Heritage Areas is one of those. But we also administer the Land and Water Conservation Fund for uh, the country. That is the revenues from our government shelf oil leasing. We have the Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Program, which are community organizers. We have several here in Chicago that assist uh, to help communities find their assets and help them protect them. We also administer what's called the Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program, which uh, extends preservation into redevelopment as well. So the LWCF, Land Water Conservation Fund, RTCA, Rivers and Trails Conservation Assistance, provides both funding and technical assistance to communities, to parks, to waterways, creates trails, and preserves as well. And through these programs, we hope to help communities, particularly large urban communities, create places for the public to enjoy and reconnect to nature. I spent yesterday afternoon with some of your staff and representatives down in the uh, Millennium Reserve, the Calumet area of the city, to look at the extraordinary opportunity and the contrast between a heavily industrialized area and these incredible wetlands and open spaces that can be connected together and help revitalize uh, that part of uh, of the area. It's, uh, the opportunity division is fantastic. A few stats about uh, Illinois as well. We've provided over 200 million in the last few decades to help create recreational opportunities in this area, including places like the Illinois Beach State Park on Lake Michigan. And um, there have been benefits from that. We, again, are often inarticulate about the benefits of outdoor recreation. Over 3 million folks from this area take of that, and that contributes $2.4 billion uh, to outdoor recreation economy as well. Another little obscure program we have in the Park Service is uh, it's called our Historic American Engineering Record, or HAIR, as we to call it. Um, but we've been documenting the historic assets of the, of the canal into large format architectural photography and drawings, and those are preserved in perpetuity as a part of a vast collection of these uh, engineering records uh, at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The National Park Service uh, maintains that collection so that they are documented should we ever be lost on the ground. I mentioned the Federal Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program as well, and that's a partnership we have with the IRS. It's, it's one of the largest urban redevelopment reuse of historic properties, and it is the largest. Uh, in the country. Uh, just since its inception, we've done $62 billion of historic property rehabilitations um, in the country, including things like affordable housing. So think about this. The National Park Service, the, the manager of Yellowstone, has assisted in developing 120,000 units of affordable housing in this country um, in the last few decades. Um, not much you would expect. Um, and in doing so, creating about 2.2 million jobs. Here in Chicago, um, there's a couple of projects that uh, uh, we've been very active in the past and a couple underway. In the past, the, uh, the Art Deco Carbide and Carbon Building was, uh, was one of our checks with uh, just a few years ago, 106 million investment. The Continental and Commercial Bank Building, um, it's on the South Street, so you may know that. So it was a $300 million project. Uh, a couple of them that are underway include uh, Lewis Sullivan's Carson Peary Scott Building and the IBM Building on Wabash. Uh, as a matter of fact, Illinois has led the nation in historic preservation tax credit projects <coughs> just in this last year, 365 million. Uh, so fantastic. So I bring all of this up just to let you know that there are programs and assets out there in the National Park Service that you can bring to your community uh, to help them protect their historic fabric, protect their natural resources, and reconnect the American public as well. As a matter of fact, I tasked our urban park superintendents uh, of bringing them all together in New York uh, in July, sorry, we were not Chicago, uh, but uh, uh, to sit down and talk about the role that our national parks can play in the urban environments, as well as all of the national park units that are out there to work with our heritage areas. Um, to provide assistance, to bring something to the table, to bring our expertise in preservation and conservation 
and tell an American story. Um, that's what the second century of the National Parks is going to be all about. Now let me say a couple things about heritage areas in general, and that is that we need legislation. We need programmatic legislation in the heritage area program. Uh, we need a sort of statutory framework. The National Park Service has its organic act. It unifies the 397 units into a system. There is no such thing for the heritage area program. So we have individual legislation for all 49 units now, and it really is an inefficient approach uh, and creates a kind of a mix of, of types. Um, and so we are seeking a programmatic legislative of uh, the heritage area uh, managers and leaders and CEOs and boards and others that have been working with us on this. We also need sustainable funding for the heritage areas as well. And certainly you and others of the older heritage areas are approaching the end of their federal funding. And uh, we know that continues to be a challenge, particularly for just basic operations. And we are supporting and advocating very, very uh, strongly with the OMB and the Congress to, uh, to create uh, sustainable funding, both grants as well as operational for heritage areas, uh, as well as technical assistance, so that there is a long-term perpetuity mission for all of our heritage areas as well. You know, you that work in the heritage area program have an incredible argument to be made in these tough economic times. The leveraging that you do through partnerships, through philanthropy, through working with uh, local governments uh, is exactly uh, the role that we need in this, this day and age. Um, so in a way, these tough economic times are an opportunity to make the case. It's a perfect model of local control uh, with a broad national vision. I personally believe, professionally believe, that the National Park Service's mission the stewardship responsibility is extraordinarily complemented by the heritage areas just as much as we complement the heritage area program. We know that history and culture of this country are not confined to isolated sites, that they are surrounded by a sweeping and living history that defined by geography and the role in the American heritage. Through the cooperative model of national heritage areas, we are able to address conservation at the ecosystem scale, and that is really what we need to make a difference. Perhaps more importantly, heritage areas have great power to educate, to speak to the generations yet to come. Experiencing history and landscape in such a unique way, in both the broad sweep and intimate detail that a national heritage area can provide, we hope future generations will be inspired to join us in our effort to preserve these places that are uniquely representative of the American experience. Thank you all for honoring the National Park Service with the Canal Boat Captains Award. Proud to be your partner for the last 30 years, and we look forward to many, many years of 